this is Britt Caswell with another example video. In this video I'm covering example 3 from lesson 2-1 in the Savas Realize Algebra 1 textbook. Uh, the purpose of this example is to understand the slope-intercept form. Here we are given two points and neither of them is the y-intercept and we are asked to write the equation of the line in slope-intercept form. So remember, that's our form, y equals mx plus b. And so what I tend to do is I tend to follow a, a certain procedure. Okay. The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to find the slope. Now remember, to find the slope, you can do either rise over run, or you can use this equation, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay. The second step is to use the slope and one point, doesn't matter which one, to solve for b, or for your y-intercept. Okay, and then step number three is going to be to plug m and b into the slope-intercept equation. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and let's do step one. So again, step one says to find the slope using this formula. So I'm going to say that m is equal to, and what I do for these is I go to my points and I label them as x1, y1, and x2, y2. And that way I don't get things backwards. If I put them in in the wrong order, if I, if I flip the x1 and the y1, um, my slope comes out backwards. So y2 minus y1 is 4 minus negative 2. And then x2 minus x1 is 3 minus negative 1. That says negative 1. Alright, so remember when you subtract a negative, that's the same thing as adding. So this is saying 4 plus 2, which is 6 and 3 plus 1, which is 4. And then go ahead and reduce your fraction because both of those are divisible by 2. Okay, so this is my m value, my slope. All right, now step 2 says to use the slope and one of the points to solve for b. All right, now it doesn't matter which point you choose but I usually prefer to use the one that doesn't have any negatives because negatives make me nervous. Alright, so where the y is on our main equation, I'm going to plug in a 4. So 4 equals, and then where m is, I'm going to go ahead and put that 3 halves that we just found. Okay, and then times x, our x value is 3, plus B. So if you notice, now we have an equation that just has an unknown value, which is b. And we can find that. So my first thing, I'm going to multiply together the 3 halves times 3. Um, 3 halves is the same thing as 1.5, just so you know. So I'm probably going to keep it as a decimal. Um, that way... Uh, you guys have some easier numbers to deal with instead of dealing with fractions. Uh, so 1.5, which is 3 halves, times 3 is 4.5. And then to get B alone, or to isolate B, I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 4.5 to the other side of the equation. 
So I get that negative 0.5 is equal to my B value. Okay, so we found M, we found B. So now step three in my procedure is just to go ahead and um, is just to go ahead and plug in those values into our equation. So I have y equals, and I'm going to leave a space for m, times x, and then I leave my space for b. My m, we said, was 3 halves, so I'm going to put that right there in front of the x. And my b is a negative 0.5. And there we have it. There's that equation written in slope-intercept form. Let's go ahead and let's try one more. Okay, so again, the first thing that we need to do is we need to find the slope, right? Using this equation. So that means that I'm going to need to label my points as x1, y1, and x2, y2. So let's go ahead and let's plug those in. So y2 minus y1, I have 6 minus 4, divided by x2 minus x1, so negative 1 minus 5. Alright, so 6 minus 4 is 2, negative 1 minus 5, is negative 6. And if I reduce that, 2 and 6 are both divisible by 2, so that's negative 1 third. So there's my slope. Now step 2 in our procedure, right, is to go ahead and take that slope and take one of these points and use it to solve for b. Okay, So I'm plugging into the formula y equals mx plus b and trying to solve for b. So I'm going to go ahead and use 5, 4 because they're both positive. It doesn't matter which one you use. So for y I'm going to use a 4 equals. Then where our m is, I'm using that negative 1 third that we just got times x. Our x value is 5 plus b. So if I go to multiply this out, negative one-third times five is negative five-thirds. I'm going to go ahead and, and convert four to a fraction. And the reason why is if I were to divide five by three, I'm going to get a never-ending decimal. And so I, I don't want to have to deal with that irrational number. So I'm going to go ahead and well, I guess it is rational. I, I don't want to deal with that ugly number, I'm going to say. So I'm going to turn 4 into an expression of thirds. Okay, so I'm going to multiply 4 by 3 over 3, which is 12 thirds. And so what that does is that finds a common denominator so that when I go to add 5 thirds to each side of the equal sign here, I can just combine them right away. So 12 thirds plus 5 thirds is 17 thirds. And that's my B value. Alright, and then our last step, step number three, is to take our M and to take our B and to plug them into the slope intercept form of the equation. So where the m goes in our slope-intercept form, I'm going to write negative one-thirds. And where my b goes, or my y-intercept value, I'm going to put 17 thirds. And there we have it, our final answer. The slope-intercept form of the equation. So that's example three. Until next time.